Choosing a season at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival is very similar in so many ways to other seasons. I was honored to be a part of, say, at the Kansas City Repertory Theater where I was before, but then it is actually also the most amazingly different and complex thing. Rotating repertory, which we are one of the few places that still do that in the country, in the world, has a kind of complexity that is so fun and so mind-boggling, I haven't even begun to get my arms around it. But every th one of the reasons I love being here is if we do look at everything, we look at the whole Western canon, we look at all American classics, we look at developing new work and new musicals that we think people may have never seen anything like it before, we look at what kind of joy can we bring to the season? Where is the joy and the humor? And then where also is the profound, meaningful evening that you would get nowhere else but when you come to see Shakespeare? And which ones, in which places, why King Lear here versus why King Lear outdoors? Those kind of conversations are some of the most fascinating things. And you'll get to hear today what those choices were now for 2014. So I am thrilled to introduce to you the Artistic Director of the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, Phil Rausch. Um, I am going to announce all 11 plays today, but I'm going to tell you right up front, I'm not going to announce any directors uh, because we have some TBAs because there were some very nail-biting shifts in what these plays were as of just a couple of days ago. And uh, so I, I've not uh, had the time to go through the proper process of, of hiring directors on some of the projects. So we will do a separate announcement to our members and to the press in the next couple of weeks uh, where we announce who the 11 directors are in addition to what the 11 projects are. Does that make sense? Uh, with that said, here we go. Running all year in the Angus Bomer Theater, opening in late February of 2014, is The Tempest by William Shakespeare. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's been uh, 13 years since we last did The Tempest in the Bomer. And uh, I'm very, very, is it 13? Yes. 13 or maybe 14. And anyway, I'm very, very excited to bring this extraordinary story. It's, it's commonly believed to be Shakespeare's last play he wrote by himself. Uh, it is, among many other things, a contemplation of the role of the artist in society. Uh, but I, I love The Tempest because, you know, Shakespeare plays, I talk about this in my show, uh, my Playbill Remarks for King Lear, always operate on all these levels at once, spiritual, political, psychological, uh, and on and on. And I think The Tempest is one of the most beautiful blendings of all those planes of writing. It's really a microscopic examination of the structure of society, both reflecting what the world is and what the world should and maybe could be. And I love the play very dearly for that reason. Running alongside The Tempest all year long is a little skit called The Coconuts. <laughs> the Coconuts, some of you may recognize immediately, is a Marx Brothers vehicle. Uh, it has music and lyrics by Irving Berlin, a book by George S. Kaufman, with additional text by Maury Riskin. And this version that's going to premiere at OSF is adapted by company member Mark Bedard, who played Groucho last time. So I'm excited about this project for a lot of reasons. Uh, I, I'm excited uh, about it as an investment in company and in this kind of amazing connection that has happened between the Marx Brothers and uh, members of our company. Uh, and uh, anarchy, uh, the need for laughter, uh, always, always. Uh, their incredible reverence, and uh, irreverence rather. Um, and uh, and, 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 and uh, yeah, Mark Bedard's really uncanny connection with Groucho and the spirit of the Marx Brothers work. So uh, really, really excited to be sharing that with you all year long in 2014. Also opening on that same weekend in February is a neglected American classic, a play called The Sign in Sidney Brewstein's Window by Lorraine Hansberry. How many people in this room know that play? Raise your hands. How many people in this room have heard of that play? Raise your hands. How many people in this room are hearing of that play for the first time? I see, I rest my case. 
And uh, it, is, it was done on Broadway in 1964. So this is a 50th anniversary production of this neglected classic. It was uh, the last play that was produced in Lorraine Hansberry's life. She actually died on closing night uh, in 1964. Uh, and I think it's a very important part of our mission to look at not only the best known work of an important author, we've done Raisin in the Sun, for instance, but also their less well-known work. One of the things that's very unusual uh, with this project is that uh, uh, this uh, renowned African-American playwright wrote a play with eight white characters and only one African-American character. That is the sign in Sidney Brewstein's window. Uh, Lorraine is looking at a Jewish family uh, and it's going to be really, really unique to get that point of view. Uh, it's a fighting for change play. It's a play that's about the disappointments and the successes uh, of a society in a highly politicized time in our nation's history, both then and now. Uh, and it's really about a play that's it's about redefining activism for the tumultuous times in which the play is set. So I think it's a great play for us to look at in 2014. And we're working with Lorraine Hansberry's estate on uh, uh, reviving this play in this 50th anniversary year. Uh, opening in April in the Bomer Theater is uh, a world premiere adaptation of a beloved American novel. Dramatic pause. <laughs> Madeline Lengel's A Wrinkle in Time. And uh, this is a project I'm very, very excited about for many reasons. Uh, you know, boy, oh boy, as the guy who got to work on The Music Man and The Pirates of Penzance, seeing multiple generations of families that are always an important part of OSF's work, but seeing those parents bring their kids and those grandparents bring their grandkids, and when we really hit the sweet spot, all three generations of a family together, or even uh, rarely four generations of a family together at the theater. There is nothing like it. It is so moving to me. So I think that this is a great stake in the ground in terms of the importance of multiple generations of family being able to enjoy theater together. And if you have, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a play that is loved uh, by young people, but also by adults who read it when they were adults, who read it when they were young people. Uh, so bring all those who are young, uh, young, young and young at heart uh, to see this. Uh, and it's also a new adventure for OSF to tell a science fiction story uh, that is about children and about the power of love to overcome evil. And I'm just getting weepy. What about that? <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> Opening uh, in uh, late July of 2014 in the Angus Bomer Theater is uh, another world premiere, our second world premiere. Uh, and it is a play called The Great Society by Robert Schenken. This is, uh, yes, the follow-up to All the Way. It deals, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> It uh, tells the story of LBJ's second term, his uh, so-called legitimate term, when he's actually won an election uh, from uh, January of 1965 to when he leaves office in January of 1969. Uh, it was commissioned by Seattle Rep up in Seattle, and we are co-producing this world premiere production with Seattle Rep, and it is being developed, uh, of course, by American Revolutions uh, here at OSF. So that is the lineup for the BOMAR. Uh, I'm going to shift us now to the room in which we sit and stand, the Thomas Theater. Are you getting used to calling it the Thomas Theater? Yeah. Doesn't that feel great for those of you who knew Peter? We are going to do a Shakespeare play and it is going to run all year long in the Thomas Theater. And that Shakespeare play is The Comedy of Errors. And the Comedy of Errors uh, is going to be a very special production because this production of Comedy of Errors is going to be set in the Harlem Renaissance. So it is going to deal with, uh, its setting will allow uh, that story of uh, the cultural conflict between one set of twins grew up in Syracuse, one set 
uh, grew up uh, in the, the boys from Syracuse, and then it just flew out of my brain. Where are we? Yeah. Ephesus, thank you. Um, we're in Ephesus, and uh, so it will deal with the great migration of the African American community from the rural south to the urban north. So one set of twins is from the urban uh, uh, north, one set of twins is from the rural south. They've landed in the big city to uh, try to find their long lost twins. Uh, it is going to be delightful, and uh, I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, am I not into the mic enough? Can you hear me now? Um, everybody got comedy of errors? Comedy Veras, Harlem Renaissance. Um, opening in late March is Chiara Alegria Hudis. Uh, her beautiful Pulitzer Prize winning play. This play won the Pulitzer last year. And it is called Water by the Spoonful. It actually happens to be running off Broadway right now. Louis Douthat saw it a couple nights ago. Um, and she said, yes, we did the right thing in picking it after seeing it. Uh, it is an achingly beautiful contemporary contemplation uh, of the nature of addiction, of community, of forgiveness, the human need for connection, and ultimately it's a hope play. And I like those hope plays. It's a beautiful, beautiful play. And we're going to uh, change it up a little bit. It's going to open in late March. It's going to run for a couple of months. It's going to close in the third week of June. And then after Labor Day, it's going to reopen and come back and run for the last couple months of the season. And the reason it's going to do that is because of the third Thomas Theater show, which is our third and final world premiere in 2014. We have a very exciting program uh, called the Edgerton Musicals. Uh, Brad and Louise Edgerton uh, have funded an initiative for us to uh, commission new American musicals. And this is the first Edgerton musical to reach OSF stages, one that we commissioned ourselves. It is called Family Album, and it is by Stu. That's one name, like, uh, like Cher, sure. Um, <laughs> Stu and uh, Heidi Rodewald. And they are the writers of the Tony Award winning musical Passing Strange. Uh, this is a rock musical, and it takes a very, very interesting look at what it means to be an artist in the United States today. There's a uh, touring band uh, whose members are on the road, gig after gig, going from bar to bar, club to club, concert hall to concert hall, and uh, they land at the end of a long, exhausting tour at the home of a former board member who's married, has kids, and has made a lot of money. And it's about the choices that uh, this community faces in terms of uh, the, the artist who's not making a lot of money and pursuing their dreams, and the person who uh, has the family and has the financial security and gave up on the art. Uh, it's a very, very interesting and very touching story. And that is going to run just for the summer months in 2014. It's going to open around 4th of July, and it's going to close around Labor Day. Hence, Water by the Spoonful coming back into the mix. Plus, we just don't want you to get bored with thinking you know how the calendar works at OSF. <laughs> we want to just keep, 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 keep shaking it up for you. Uh, last but never least, we have our Elizabethan stage, our outdoor theater. And there are, of course, as always, three projects on the outdoor stage, uh, two of them by Shakespeare and one not. So I'm going to first share the two Shakespeare's with you. Uh, opening uh, in June of 2014 will be Shakespeare's Richard III. The last time we produced Richard III outdoors will have been 31 years ago. We've done it a couple times in the Bomer since then, but not outdoors in 31 years. It is, uh, Richard, of course, is one of Shakespeare's greatest creations. He is a brilliant blend of comedy and tragedy, uh, the play is. Uh, he is a character who tries and often succeeds in seducing the audience into cheering on the most horrific accomplishments imaginable. Uh, running along with Richard III outdoors all summer long and into the fall is The Two Gentlemen of Verona. 
a beautiful comedy by Shakespeare, a play about the painful and joyful process of growing up, about learning to take responsibility for others. And uh, among many great, great features, this play, of course, features uh, the great clown Speed and Launce and the beloved dog Crab. So it's always fun to see, right? How are they going to deal with Crab? Is it going to be a real dog? Is it going to be a puppet? Is it going to be an actor playing the dog? What's it going to be? Uh, also running outdoors in this 2014 season is uh, only our second full blast musical on the outdoor stage. As a follow-up uh, to some years back, The Pirates of Penzance, this year we are going to be doing our first ever, which I think for a language-based theater, a theater that revels in the word, the power of the word, we are doing our first ever Stephen Sondheim show with Into the Woods. Uh, this, of course, is a great mashup of fairy tale characters. Uh, it's a uh, delightful, it starts as a delightful romp, and it becomes a very serious study in self-interest versus community responsibility. Uh, obviously, that resonates thematically with many of the other pieces in the season. Uh, Sign in Sidney Brustein's Window, Great Society, Chief Among Them. And I love that a musical outdoors is part of that active dialogue. So in summary, the 2014 season, we have four plays written by Shakespeare, at least one in each of our three spaces. We are doing three world premieres, two of which uh, we commissioned, all three of which we commissioned, uh, continuing our, our, our really exciting developments in new work and our contributions to the field that way, that you get to see it here first. Uh, in our ongoing quest to more accurately reflect the society that we all live in, uh, for the first time ever, the majority of plays not written by Shakespeare in this season are wholly or, or at least partly written by five really amazing female writers. And I'm very, very proud of that. When you're dealing with two millennia or more of uh, male playwrights, uh, uh, it's pretty amazing to come up with a mix of stories that have uh, uh, all those women writers. And I'm really, really proud of our company for making that commitment and for bringing those voices to the stage. Uh, it is, as you can probably tell, a year in which we are deepening our investigation of certain genres and even certain projects from the past couple of seasons. Uh, it is a commitment, this season reflects a commitment to a number of projects that are appropriate for multiple generations of families, as well as our ever, ever important student audiences. There are a lot of journey plays in the season. There are a lot of adventures uh, to the woods, to an island, and yes, to other planets. <laughs> and ultimately to me, this season is packed with characters who are trying to figure out how to live their individual lives with dignity and with responsibility in relation to rapidly the rapidly changing societies that they find themselves in. And if that's not a good lens to look at the world in 2014, I don't know what else is. So that is the 2014 season. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah.